Hey guys, uh, just here with another tutorial. Uh, this is a, a technique that a lot of people seem not to know about, so I, I figured I'd put a video up and just uh, quickly go over um, what this topic is about. So if we look at our original footage here, uh, this is what we're starting with. Um, so this is three, uh, about 100 frames long, just a drone shot rotating around um, this hill. And so I'm not gonna play the whole thing because it's not cached, but that's kind of what we have, this kind of rotation. Um, so what's really cool about uh, this specific technique I'm going to teach you guys is with the depth generator node. Uh, just a quick example of what we can actually do with that depth generator pass. Uh, this is just a quick comp. Um, by no means would be completely final, but this is sort of like a relight um, using kind of a depth pass, uh, normals pass, and position pass. So uh, I'll just quickly go over those individually so we can see uh, how to get this sort of result. Uh, so what we have here is a 3D camera tracked scene. So I already have solved the, the 3D camera. So if I hit tab here, you can see uh, if I double click the point cloud, you'll see that we have this already solved. Uh, so if you have this setup already solved, um, and this technique really works best with shots with a lot of parallax. Um, so you see our cameras rotate, rotating and traveling quite a bit in this scene. Um, which is what's going to allow us to do this uh, effectively. Um, so if I double click the depth generator node, we have a couple settings in here uh, when we're using it. So to get those maps that we need, uh, it's really simple. Um, and pretty much if you hover over any of these with your mouse, it, it describes pretty in detail what each uh, slider does. You know, for example, depth, detail, noise, strength. If you hover over, you see, okay, matching pixels in between frames increase to uh, force the matches for example where fine details are missed so you can play around with these settings when you're uh, going to use this but you don't have to really mess around with it that much all you really, really need to do is hook in your camera and hook in your source and you analyze the sequence and after you've done that um, what you want to do I'll create a fresh one just to show you guys so I'm going to plug in my camera and plug in my source footage and so what you want to do is you want to have this set to depth uh, 1 over Z, which is the default. And you also want to export these two uh, other maps here. So we want position. And normally these uh, two channels aren't actually here. So what you normally have to do is click this box, go down to new, and you'll type in position. And then you'll hit this button RGBA. And it will automatically fill these boxes with red, green, blue, alpha uh, in the new channel position. And, we're, and you do the same thing for uh, this normal point. So you say surface normal, go to new channel, say normals. You press this button. So it's going to create a channel named normals uh, or channel set called normals uh, with these channels stored in it. So if that's confusing to you, uh, if you're a complete beginner, this might be a little bit complicated. Um, you know, I have classes going over channels and 3D system and uh, CG compositing. So that's all available in the description below if you're interested. Um, but so this is what we have and we hit OK. And so what we're going to get now is if you were to analyze the sequence, I'm not going to do it because it takes a, a couple minutes to process. Um, if you analyze the sequence and you'll notice that you actually get your channels here now. So we have a depth channel, a normals channel and a uh, position pass channel or channel set rather. So if I look at position, normals, or depth, we have all of those um, utility passes. And if you guys aren't familiar with utility passes, again, that's covered in my new 303 CG compositing course on how to use those channels. Um, so I'll just give you guys a couple examples of how to actually use them here um, in with what we're working with. So Let's take our pre comp footage. So what I did was I took that depth generator and I wrote it out. So I took it and I saved out a file uh, called depth underscore, uh, you know, the three hashtags. So it'll render out an image sequence. And then I set it to 32 bit float. Uh, this is important. It's, it's under the data type. You want to set it to 32 bit float and you want to turn off the compression. And these two settings are important because um, these, these special utility passes, they're storing um, 3D data, sort of, in these pictures. So, uh, you know, distance across this geometry is what's being stored. Um, so we have to make sure there's no compression, otherwise you'll lose some of that data. 
Um, but once you have this rendered out, let me show you guys what it's actually useful for. So I'm going to start with uh, depth because that's the most easy to explain. So let me just re-render that. That's uh, supposed to be depth. Okay, so we have our footage and we have our depth pre-comp. See, this one's called depth. And if now if I shuffle out the depth into the RGB and A, uh, just so we can see it here in the RGB and A, uh, we see that we have this kind of foggy um, image here. And that's representing the distance from the camera of our hill. So it's actually created this, this depth map just from our live footage, which is really awesome. Um, so what I can do is uh, I inverted this picture and then I graded it down. So I, if you look here in the grade, uh, it's set to 0.99. So I took this black point slider and I started sliding it all the way up until I start to see something. And you see that the image starts to kind of pop in and out. So then I just take my uh, up and down arrow keys and just adjust that until we start to get like a kind of a faded gradient result. And that's what I want. So what I'm doing is actually kind of creating like fog uh, across our real scene. So now that I have this alpha that I've created, if I look at the RGB and A channel, uh, that's what we've created. And by the way, when I was grading this, I made sure to switch this to RGB and A. Uh, I plug this into a grade and we say it's being masked by the alpha, RGB dot alpha. So the alpha that we just created over here. And now when I'm lifting, uh, we're actually adding something that looks like fog to our scene. So this is uh, how you could create fog in a scene that has absolutely no fog. And <clears throat> normally you'd have to do roto shapes or something like that. Um, but if you can get away with this, if there's a lot of parallax in your scene, you can actually use this depth map uh, to create a more realistic fog. Um, and what's really awesome about this as well is, you know, you can play with your level of fog really easily. If I just go to the black point and I, I click after the two numbers and I start using my up and down arrow keys, you see I can slide that fog along the surface. Um, so you could do all kinds of effects with this. You can make it look like you're flying through a cloud. You know, you could, uh, you know, easily adjust your fog levels in this way. Um, so this is just another example, a uh, softer fog. So we just compare the two alphas. That was a little bit more harsh. This one, uh, I played a bit with the gamma and the black point. So that's how you can play around with the depth. Okay, so the next one we have here is the position. So I have the depth, normals, and position. Those are the three we rendered out. Um, so I have our basic footage here, and I have uh, shuffled out the position pass into the RGB and A. So that takes the position channel set, and it puts it into our normal red, green, blue, alpha uh, image. So our normal kind of um, image data stream. That's kind of how you can think of it. Uh, so this tool is a custom tool. You can download this script if you're interested. Um, this was made by Adrian Herr uh, in 2016. I think it's available on Nukipedia. You can also find it there, but uh, if you wanna just get it here in the script, you can download it as well um, for free. So uh, what this tool does is, uh, I explained it in my Nuke 303 class, CG compositing class, but um, you, know, you can take this uh, little picker here and you know we have this really bizarre colorful image and what this image actually is representing is the 3d data in our scene so if i hit the alpha while i'm taking this color picker so i'm sampling by holding uh, control or uh command on mac um is it yeah i think it's command um using a windows keyboard at the same time here but yeah so holding command on mac or control on windows you see this number is changing while i'm sampling it uh, but if I hit the alpha channel, you'll see actually what's happening here is we're getting a 3D bubble uh, based on the position that we've rendered out. So I can I can move this thing around and you know create an alpha based on this position. And you see we have a lot of detail. We have all these little trees and um, all the little bumps that we got from the parallax. And so that's why I said it works a little bit better when your shot has a lot of parallax. It captures a lot of detail. Um, so we can use this alpha. Let's say if I stick it on the top of this hill, we have that alpha saved here. And now if I go to a color grade, you can see we can grade the top of that hill uh, based on that alpha. And what's awesome about this is it's going to stick to our surface. So if I hit play, um, that alpha is actually going to stick to our, our scene. And we don't have to do anything like placing cards or 
anything like that. We just have uh, a color correction that's sticking. And we have a really nice alpha, especially on the edges uh, with the trees. So that's really um, a pretty cool example of, of, you know, you can get creative with this and come up with different uh, ideas. Um, the last one we have is the normals. Uh, and so normals are used for relighting um, scenes or CG or whatever you're uh, doing. Um, basically, normals just stores the direction uh, of a of a face of geometry. We don't have any geometry here. It's just a 2D image. But if we just take a look at what the normals pass looks like, it looks really crazy. Um, but what we need to do is we need to shuffle that into our main image. So we have our footage here and we have our depth um, kind of pre comp that I saved out uh, over here. So we'll take the depth pass and what we need to do is say we create a shuffle node and we say I'll do it. I'll just restart it just so it's easier visually. So I plug it in and plug in a and what I want to do is I want to copy what's in this picture into this data stream. And the reason we have to do that is because that's how this node is going to recognize it. So they need to be in the same stream. You can't have it at the uh, normals here and the color picture here. So um, what we do is so we say from A. So we see um, in the shuffle node we see B and B. Uh, we want to copy the data in from A in and put that into B. So we want to switch this to A and say normals. And then we want to copy that into the A uh, into the uh, B stream for normals. So I'm going to switch this little box to normals. And then I'm just going to take this and drag it. So you see that these lines are copying. Um, so we see from A into B. So this is B. A into B. And we're copying the normals. So normals red, normals green, normals blue. So we've copied that channel. So now if I view this and I look at the channel normals, we'll see that that data is there. And if I look beforehand, you see it's not there. So that's what we've done. We've just copied this layer sort of uh, into this, um, this stream. All right. So now that we've done that, if we go to the Realite node, uh, and if you've used this node, you know how it works. Um, but basically, you need to plug in a material. So you can plug in a nuke material, like basic material is one. You could also type in a fong. That's another one. This is more of a metallic looking material. Um, but you need your camera, your material, and your color, which is your background, and also a light. So I'm using a direct light, which is like a sun. And if we look at that and double click in the Relight node, and you'll see that I've set the normal vectors to normals. So it's picking up that channel that we created. And now we can actually create a light based on that scene. So we're getting an alpha that looks like this. And if I just quickly show you what that looks like through a grade. So I've created that alpha and I'm plugging that into a grade and grading a little bit of orange. And you can see now we're actually starting to get um, some kind of light hitting on the tips of these hills. So it actually looks like now we're getting like a sunset. So this is a way you could create like a golden hour effect, like kind of cheat it. Um, and that's pretty cool. And also what's awesome about this is you can rotate this light. So if I double click that light and I rotate it, um, we can see that that actually can be manipulated. Uh, you know, if we want light on this side of the hill, uh, we can do that. We can we can rotate this light around in 3D space and get different results. So you see now we have the light on this side. So you could use multiple, you could create multiple alphas with this and you know totally relight a scene, um, you know using this technique. So those are the main three main uh, techniques. Uh, I'll just show you guys again what I started the video with here, combining all those techniques. Um, and this is just again a really quick comp. This is not uh, you know, final quality, uh, you would need a lot of finessing to make it 100% realistic. Um, but if I just break break it down here and go through, uh, this is just sort of the real light that we have uh, using those techniques. So we have the original and we have kind of a foggy uh, sort of golden hour effect starting to happen here. Again, um, you would have longer shadows and more highlights on the rocks and maybe more reflections and pinging highlights and all kinds of stuff if you really, really want to make it uh, more realistic. 
Um, but again, this is just to demonstrate uh, the class. So uh, I'm not going to go through it entirely because I've already explained the, th the techniques, but maybe the one you guys are curious about is the fog. Um, so I, just to show you guys how I did it, um, it's just the depth pass doing the black and white uh, white balance grade, or sorry, uh, white point and black point uh, grading. And what I did was actually took a gray constant and uh, graded up a little bit of um, sunlight into it using a radial. And I just masked that by the depth. So we get this kind of sunlight um, filling the volume of the smoke that we've created. And then I just basically put that over the top. And that's how we get that kind of sort of effect there. And then again, just a little bit of relighting on the tops and some final color grading at the end. Uh, and just a crop to give it a, a bit of a wide, you know, sort of look. So you can make this more realistic as well. You could break it up with atmosphere and all kinds of stuff. Uh, if, you're, if this was like a final production shot, but um, hopefully you guys got something useful out of this video. And again, if you like the video, hit like. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm uh, and helping the channel grow. And it will allow me to produce some more content uh, like this. And if you really like it, hit the subscribe button as well. And you can hit the little bell to get notified every time I put a new video out. Um, and yeah, so thanks for watching.